Thunderdome Boxing Talk. All right, let's get into um, the David Lemieux. Well, Gennady Golovkin versus David Lemieux. Um, Steve Kim just dropped an article yesterday. Um, I read it yesterday. I just I, I was real busy yesterday. Um, I meant to get them prediction bids out. I'm gonna do them today, right right after this. I promise this time. <laughs> I'm going to do the Kovalev one, the Danny Garcia versus uh, Pauli Malignaggi one. They'll be coming out right after this. Um, and then some other stuff later this evening. So I, I'll be putting out a lot of the damn videos today. But um, let's read this article that Steve Kim put up, first of all. And big shout out to Steve Kim. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about the guy. Um, you know, uh, uh, excellent at his job. Um, Big shout out to all those guys over, you know, at the UCN too. Big shout out to Dougie Fisher um, from Ring Magazine, you know, assistant editor. Uh, big shout out to Michael Montero, uh, Montero on Boxing. Check him out if you don't know already. Um, and especially UCN, you get them all in one. So let's get into this article with them. Um, there's, there has been speculation that a middleweight unification title title bout between WBA slash IBO champion Gennady Golovkin and IBF belt holder David Lemieux is being seriously negotiated by K2 Promotions and Golden Boy. According to a couple of sources, things are moving along well and getting close to completion. That's like, man, I mean, that's the most wonderful news, right? Uh, moving along well and close to getting close to completion. Uh, I mean, you know, I was a little scared that this fight just might get put off um, for a while. But it's looking like we're going to get it. Um, I'll tell you when and where in a second. Hold on, let's keep reading. Uh, the showdown would take place in uh, October. Well, on October 17th at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Tom Loeffler, the managing director for K2, didn't say much other than the two, uh, other than to reiterate that Golovkin's goal was to unify the 160-pound division. In addition to the WBA strap, Golovkin is also the WBC interim champion, which just means he's... The, the number one contender at the, um, you know, uh, WBC. He gets next crack at uh, Co or Cotto Canelo, whoever wins that fight. Um, Lemieux won the title in emphatic fashion on the night of June 20th by knocking down the game Hassan and Dom four times en route to a 12-round unanimous decision. Golovkin has fought twice in 2015. First, he stopped Martin Murray in Monaco in 11 rounds, and then he halted Willie Monroe Jr. in six rounds at the Forum in Los Angeles on May 17th. My birthday. Word is, word is that should this fight come to fruition, it would be on pay-per-view. Ah. Man, you see, that part I don't like. Um, I, I mean, I, if they, they, they better stack the undercard. And I'm not saying this isn't like a pay-per-view worthy fight. Um, and I guess they're trying to turn Golovkin into a pay-per-view star. You know, get him some pay-per-view numbers. Even if it only does 300,000. I mean, you know, your first fight... Um, not up against, you know, a big, big superstar um, like a Mayweather or a Pacquiao or a Cotto. Uh, three, four hundred thousand would be good. You know, I, I think it actually will do more than that, though. But I don't think it'll hit a million or anything like that. But um, I know what they're doing there. They're trying to get, you know, him some uh, pay-per-view credibility. You know, some numbers to use and leverage for future fights. Things like that. Um, but it does suck, you know, um, that we have to pay for the fight extra. But, man, I mean, I'm not paying pay-per-view for it. I'm going to it. I'll tell you that right now. That's for sure. Um, but it, 
as long as it's read like man that's 75 all of shit for pay-per-view it's just ridiculous whenever Floyd did that for Canelo and then every pay-per-view after was you know 75 he should have did it just for that fight man he shouldn't have tried to you know do the same they should have stayed at that you know 54.99 man or 59.99 you know I, I would really I would really like to see um, K2 offer this fight for you know 59.99 like how the normal pay-per-views were just a couple years ago I mean I, you get it in high def and then the taxes I mean you're looking at like 85 bucks that's crazy you might as well just go buy a ticket to the damn fight you know I mean unless you're you know, not in that area or whatever but um, yeah. uh, th it, that's just expensive I'd really like to see them you know start it off like, hey man every, every, you don't gotta charge that much for a fight but being that that just is the price of the pay-per-views now they might want to do it to uh, so you know in negotiations with Cotto or Canelo or something they can't be like, well, we sold this many pay-per-views, and then Canelo or Cotto is like, yeah, but they were only $59.99 pay-per-views, you know. It's, it's a bunch of bullshit, but uh, that's the business of it, and politics of it, and all that shit. Uh, man, pay-per-view for this fight, though. Ah. It, it, I guess it is a pay-per-view fight, you know, it's a unification action-packed fight, um, big name, I, I mean, it qualifies as one, I guess, I mean, it definitely qualifies, uh, I don't know, I just hate hearing any fights on pay-per-view, I guess, you know, I, Co besides Cotto and Can, I mean, besides the names that Cotto and Canelo have, uh, this fight is, like, the same thing. You know, just don't have the Puerto Rican Mexican rivalry in it. Um, you know, you got a, a skilled boxer, um, Cotto, Golovkin, uh, both bo both punchers also, verse more of uh, the puncher types. You know, just puncher types, um, less skilled fighters in Canelo and Lemieux. Uh, other than like the heritage and the name, you know, it's the same thing, really. Um, same type of fight, you no know, barn burners. Um, and Cotto and Canelo ain't even a unification. I don't know. I mean, I can understand it, but I'd rather not see it on pay per view. But, you know, I know they're, what they're doing. They're trying to get Golovkin some pay per view numbers so they can turn him into a star, you know. Um, you know, and claim he's a, you know, hey, he's a pay-per-view guy now, you know, but, I don't know, we'll see how that goes, um, that might have been also the only way they could get the kind of money needed to get Lemieux to, um, fight Golovkin right now and not take a fight up in Montreal first, you know, just, um, the, the, uh, a voluntary against just, a cherry picked opponent, you know, just a money grab fight, uh, showcase fight, then fight Golovkin. Maybe for the money they needed, they kind of had to put it on pay per view. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, you know, HBO is confident that they will get enough buys to pony up whatever money they need. Because um, this isn't a fight that's going to let down. You know, there's no way this fight can be a stinker, put it that way, you know. Um, there's no way someone ain't getting knocked the fuck out. That's for sure. This fight is not going 12 rounds. Um, you know, uh, David Lemieux, IBF title holder, uh, 34-2 and two, um, with 31 KOs. You know, um, I think he's five foot nine with a 70-inch reach. Because I know he's just a, a hair shorter in the same reach. So I think he's five foot nine. Cause I know Triple G is a uh, five ten seventy inch reach. You know, so that's I mean they're right there, like same size. You know, same size. Um, we had Triple G. You know, thirty three and 0, uh, thirty KOs. Um, what twenty KOs in a row? Twenty in a row 
and like an, a 91% KO ratio. Um, Lemieux has a high, like, you know, damn near a 90% KO ratio too in the fights that he wins. Uh, that's the only problem, you know. Uh, he's lost. I think his KO ratio, if you would be like 80, you know, so, anyway, that, I was also thinking, you know, um, top, the middleweight division right now is really lacking, um, really lacking any real competition at the moment, um, I mean, think of the real, the real top 10 middleweights, I don't care about Box Rex rankings. I mean, I, Box Rex has fucking Jermaine Taylor, like number six or something. I mean, they gotta fix that shit. Um, but, you know, it, it just the way it is. Uh, uh, they got a bunch of guys where they shouldn't be in, in that top ten anyway. But, like, the real top ten. Um, I mean, so I'd put Triple G at one and Kodo at two just because. I think Triple G beats Kodo. Now, maybe you feel different and switch them to. Either way, one and two, uh, Triple G and Kodo. Uh, number three, I think you have to say is uh, Andy Lee, right? You know, Andy Lee. Oh, um, by the way, he's the um, WBO uh, world champion. He got a fight coming up with Billy Joe Saunders in September, I believe. And Billy Joe's fighting some bum uh, the end of this month, I believe, since because he hasn't fought this year, you know. So he's just dusting himself, dusting some rust off on some scrub uh, before he gets in the ring with uh, Andy Lee. I mean, if you go check his box rack, he has, you know, uh, two fights lined up. You know, he got uh, a fight, and then I can't remember the guy's name. You know, he was like 27 and... 17 or something, uh, 21 and 12, I don't know, you got that guy, um, a cherry pick showcase, you know, just someone to beat up on, and then he got Andy Lee um, right after that, well, you know, a couple months after that, uh, in September, you know, um, I didn't put Billy Joe Saunders, you know, I'm not putting him in there because we don't know who's going to win that yet. I'm just, I'll, I'll leave them right there, both at number three, um, since they're fighting, you know. Um, there could be a new champ, maybe not. Uh, I'd put David Lemieux at four, all right. Now, some of you might be wondering, what about Quillen? You know, well, Quillen is still ranked by BoxRec in the middleweight division, but he said that he's going up to 168. He's, like he has said, I'm done with the middleweight division. My next fight will be at 168. Um, now, if he gets a good opportunity or something, um, maybe it'll be at 160. I don't know. I think he's having trouble making the weight. You know, uh, we'll have to see. You know, we'll have to see. And Danny Jacobs, I'm not putting in the top ten either because you know he's fighting Sergio Mora <clears throat> at 160. That they got that fight coming up. But Danny Jacobs also said after that fight, he's going to 168. Um, it's pretty clear, you know, that Heyman is looking at 60 like, you know, he can't do much at 60. Um, and he's seeming to be consolidating um, fighters in certain divisions. You know, like the super middleweight division, the light heavyweight division, uh, the featherweight division. Um, so, you know, we're hearing a lot of guys, you know, um, from 122 and we're seeing they're moving up to featherweight. Um, Frampton talked about he, he's going up to featherweight. Uh, that might be like after the Quig fight or something. So I don't, we're going to have to see. Um, but he's seeming to, you know, welterweight. Um, he's seeming to focus on certain divisions. Um, or at least divisions right next to each other. Uh, but he's not going to leave Danny Jacobs just at 160 when he can't be champion. So he probably figures to bring him up in the mix at 168. And he, he can be in some good fights up there. I mean, Heyman will have a lot of guys at 68. Um, a lot of guys, you know. But anyway, or was like David Lemieux. 
uh, number four. So you got basically all the champs at one, two, three, and four. Um, and Saunders in there just because he's fighting in one of those fights. Uh, and me, like me personally, I'm going off like, you know, ability, skill level, also with who you beat. Um, even though he lost Andy Lee, I still think Korobov is clearly one of the best middleweights in the world. You know, this guy is, you know, not only, you know, the, some of the highest amateur pedigree you can get, a blue chipper, um, he's a very good pro. Um, you know, it, it, <laughs> he just got caught with one of them come from behind KOs, uh, KO punches that Andy Lee lands, man. That was a fight he should have won, but, you know, you, you I mean, Andy Lee is always a dangerous opponent. Um, he's always he's always in that fight until that bell rings. It's best to get him out early, actually. Um, you know, because when he's sticking around, he's just gonna keep trying for it and trying for it. If he gets you time your 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 timing down, then you might be out of there. Um, but if you jump on him early, or if you're just huge like fucking Chavez, but um, you know. Andy Lee, yeah, man. I mean, and Korobov ain't a big puncher either. He's more of an average puncher, but a hell of a boxer. And he was kind of, you know, mixing it up with Andy Lee. Um, and he was doing a hell of a job. You know, he was winning, clearly, but got clipped. Got clipped. And he hasn't fought since then. He hasn't fought since, and he still don't even have a fight lined up, um, which is fucking crazy to me, man. I mean, it wasn't like a devastating KO or nothing. You know, he got whacked, um, but damn, you know, he, he, he should have been back in the ring by now. I, I don't know. Maybe there's something going on. I don't know. I'd like to know what's going on with Korobov. If anyone has an idea what is going on with Korobov, please leave a comment. Um... But I'm still, I'm putting Korobov at number five, man. And, and you'll know why. Because after five, there really ain't no one. I mean, uh, come on. Um, you can put the rest of these guys in any order you want. Um, you know, the, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I'll, I'll try to read them uh, uh, in an order I would like. Um, you got... Uh, Now, there's the, the, there's there's Dominic Wade, you know, he's um 18 and 0, and he just uh he just beat Sam Sullivan, but Sam Sullivan, you know, um don't let his his loss losses fool you, cause he got a shit ton of them, like 14, but he uh he's good, but he's he's old now, you know, he's aged, he's had some like uh, the the knee injury and the Taylor fight, um but Dominic Wade's an American middleweight. You know, seemingly good, um, undefeated. He's his first uh, little step up fight was Sam Sullivan, and he won that easily. Um, you know, then you got like Willie Monroe, um, you know, whose first step up, big step up, well, you know, well, he had the step up like Brandon Adams, I mean, Boxino and shit like that. Um, I can't fault him. For losing the Triple G, because I think all the middleweights, you know, are, will probably lose to him. A couple of them have a chance. A chance. Um, so, like Dominic Wade and Monroe, I don't know. It's between those uh, and number six, honestly. Um, six and seven, I'd honestly put them wherever. Um, so I'll just say, yeah, six Monroe, seven Wade, um, Chris Eubank Jr. Um, you know, uh, he beat, I think, Chudinov, uh, after he lost. Um, I, I think it was Chudinov. Who ain't very good, but, you know, it's, I don't know. And he's, uh, I think he's number one contender for, um, Gennady Golovkin. So we might see that fight, um, not... Anytime, not this year. I, I don't think we'll see it this year. 
Well, if he beats Lemieux in the winner of Andy Lee, uh, that's in September, so they can't fight him in October. Yeah, I, I don't know if we'll see uh, even Chris Eubank this year. You know, that might be... I don't know, maybe we'll see at the beginning of next year, if he even wants it, because that's a fucking guaranteed loss um, for Chris Eubank Jr. He, he needs a lot more experience. He's, you know, he is nowhere near that level yet. But, you know, if he wants it, he can get it. So, I don't know, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, got Highland. You know, Highland. Uh, Highland has, you know, them four L's. The four losses on his record, but he avenged two of them. You know, um, the dude, uh, his name's like G Godoy, uh, Godoy. Uh, he avenged that loss, and uh, it's like Veron or Veron. I don't even know who the dude is to tell you the truth. Um, Veron. Um, Highland beat him the first time by a majority decision. They rematched. Um, Highland lost by a majority decision. So they had a trilogy, you know, a tiebreaker, and Highland knocked him out in the fifth round. So you know he's he did have, he does have two losses, but they're a little they're you know years ago. Um, his most recent ones he avenged, and he's been on a decent little run. N no notable like. Notable, notable names or nothing, you know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, you got uh, Hassan and Dom and, um, and Sorrow. Sorrow. Now, they, they only, uh, you know, and Dom is only time that he ever actually, the only decent guy he ever beat was Curtis Stevens, and um, Sorrow, the only decent guy he ever, pe uh, ever beat was Glenn Tapia, so whoever you think is better of the two, I think Curtis Stevens is, uh, well, was better, I don't know where he's at right now really, but you can put them two, those, that's like the real top ten, man, you see what I'm saying, there's not much there. Now, I hear a lot of people talking about um, they'd like to see uh, Toriano Johnson in there with um, Triple G. Um, in case y'all don't know, Toriano Johnson, <laughs> like, I mean, I think BoxRec has him ranked at, like, number 50. You know what I mean? Like, if Triple G picked him, it'd be a fucking cherry pick. Just because of what you saw him do to Theron on that Rock Nation card, that don't mean shit. That was a fucking hand-picked ass opponent for him to look good. He has never beaten anybody. The one step-up fight he had was Curtis Stevens, and uh, he got knocked the fuck out. Alright, so, you know, you, your one step-up fight is Curtis Stevens, you get knocked out, and then never have another step-up fight. Like, Theron, he ain't bad or nothing, you know, but he's not even a top 20 middleweight. I mean, so for him and for Toriano Johnson to fight Triple G is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Toriano Johnson got a lot to go. Um, like, I don't even want to see that fight just because it's a fucking massacre. You know, it's a massacre. Um, I'd like to see him fight Triple G maybe in, like, you know, like next year. Um, obviously, and he could probably he won't fight him until next year, so that's good. You know, Toriano can get some some decent wins, um, but he needs to step up an opponent, man. I mean, you know, he beat fucking Theron and was calling out Triple G, but just got knocked out by Curtis Stevens. You know, it don't even make sense. I mean, yeah, Stevens is a hard puncher um, and f f got fast hands too, but I mean, dude, you know. Come on, I mean, that was that was your fight to prove you could get up over that hump, you know. Um, you know, I don't know. 
if you're an aggressive fighter, Curtis is an aggressive fighter. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the, the blueprint was laid out, uh, and you couldn't apply it. You know, you got yourself knocked out. Now, you know, he, 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 he had his moments. He definitely had his, some good moments. Uh, he got caught, you know, he, and, you know so I, I don't, it, it put it this way. He's just not ready. All right, so I'd like to see that Toriano Johnson shit needs to be dead. Uh, maybe next year. We got to see what Toriano can do um, on this new run of his. I know he's, like, reinvigorated now, whatever, you know. Let's see if it helps. Um, go up there and fight some guys. There's a lot of easy pickings in that top 20 right now that he can be fighting. You know, Rock Nation can give, like, Daniel Gills and... Um, Maybe a Macklin. I mean, get some some names. Uh, maybe he can beat those guys. Uh, if he can't, then that's it. So, I mean, you might as well find out now, unless Rock Nation is just, like, scared to, to for that to happen. I, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with Toriano Johnson. And you got um, you got one of the Charlo brothers. You got uh, Jamal Charlo up there. You know, he's... Uh, He's like 40 in, in box rec, and he has fought nobody. He's never even had, like, his step-up fight yet, um, which is fucking crazy because he's, you know, like 25-0 and 0 or something um, and never fought one decent, one decent opponent. You go look at his record, and if you just look at, like, their his opponent's resumes, um, not their resumes, but their records. They look all right, you know, because you'll see a bunch of like 22s, 22 and six, a, a 32 and eight, um, you know, a 19 and two. Uh, but they're they're all guys, you know, coming off fucking huge layoffs, a bunch of losses in a row, um, you know, up, coming up from other divisions, you know. Not, not not good. Just got knocked out in their last. I mean, you know, it's like that type of shit. It, it's just record padding guys. Um, and you know, Charlo, he's good. He, he got skills. Um, he just needs to 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 also fucking start fighting some real fighters. Um, so we'll have to see. You know what happens with those two guys. Um, and like I said, I left uh, Quillen and Jacobs out just because they said they're going up to 168. So, I mean, after the Mora, Mora fight, um, Jacobs is more than likely going to vacate that title and go up to 68. That's what he said anyway. If he doesn't, okay, you know, um, then I would I'd throw him up in the, the tail end of the top 10 because uh, he's also somebody... Who never fought anybody. Anybody. He the one guy he fought knocked him the fuck out. But that was that was a good fighter, by the way. You know, that was Dimitri Perogue, who would be holding I mean he, he was he was you know was a world champ. Um, and he would still be a, a world champ even if Triple G beat him when they were to fight, you know. Um I, I told us if some of you guys don't know who Dimitri Perogue is, he was a, a, a fantastic, fantastic fighter. Um, he would have been a force in the middleweight division. Uh, he iced Danny Jacobs and signed on to fight Gennady Golovkin. Um, Dimitri was not scared of Gennady Golovkin. Like, that's how good Perog was. Um, he was an animal in himself. He wasn't like a Triple G where he was, you know, a rest, uh, 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 a pressure fighter, but a boxer and devastate. You know, he was more of a a really, um, a really unique style, man. Really, a, a really crafty. He was a Russian, really, really crafty. Um, and he did have above, like, well, well, above average power. You know, he was able to, you know, put. Uh, Danny flat out, so, you know, he's, he was a good fighter. Now, when him and Gennady were signed on to fight, they were in camp and everything. We were supposed to see that fight and didn't get it, man. 
that would have been the best fight, um, the best fighter that was ever willing to step up and fight uh, Golovkin, bar none, bar none. Um, you know, other than Triple G and Kodo, I, I would have probably, you know, because he probably, I, I don't know who would have won that fight, but it, whoever won, you know, he would have been in the top, you know, five middleweights without a doubt. Um, you know, without a doubt, he was phenomenal. Was, that guy was really good, man. We didn't get to see much of him, you know, but... He got to he got to get some shine before it happened. He he injured his back, a career ending injury. That's why you'll you'll never see him again. It was a career ending injury, um, in camp to fight Golovkin. I, I talked about it a couple times already. I know, but I, I can't get over the fact that I didn't get to see that fight. Uh, it drives me bonkers sometimes when I think about it. Cause it would have been a fantastic showdown. Um, the, the matchup of styles, man. If you don't know Perot, Dimitri Perot, go YouTube him, please. You know, go watch the Danny Jacobs fight. Um, that, that that was his best performance, his best showing. Uh, it's a great, great, great fight, great fight. You know, so what that leads is like, where where does the middleweight division go? I mean, we got a lot of good fights for a couple of years. Then what? You know, I know Golovkin only has a couple years, but, I mean, I'd like to see him stick around for, like, four. Hopefully, man, hopefully, you know. Um, hopefully we get some decent talent coming up. Um, maybe some of them 54-pounders move up, you know. Uh, you know, Canelo has to move up. So, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll clearly get that fight. Um even if Cotto wins, we will still get the Canelo fight. Uh, Andre might move up. You know, maybe one of the uh, Jermel Charlo might move up. Andre, you know, so there's a lot of good fights that might come out of that 154 division. Um, but it's looking bleak at the moment other than that. So, you know, but great news for the fans um, for the, you know, Golovkin Lemieux unification fight. Um, I'm sure. Uh, Lemieux's people are pushing hard as hell trying to get that deal done ASAP um, just so so Golovkin can start trying to unify this division. Um, it needs to happen in every division, man. These champs need to start fighting each other. Like I said, it should be mandatory, man. Uh, like every every two years, if there's not a you know a unified champ. Um, or, you know, a unified champion, then there, there should be a, a tournament in that division. There, there got to be something like that, man. We can't have all these champs just running around. Uh, I know the WBC is taught trying to do something like that. I hope the other sanctioning bodies get involved. I really give credit to the WBC for trying that. I hope they're not just bullshitting. Um, and if they're serious, you know, more power to them, man. Um, I know I give them some shit sometimes, but that's something that I can really respect um, and give them a lot of respect for trying to get unifications, uh, you know, unification tournaments go. I mean, that'd be fantastic. Um, anyway, you know, give me your thoughts on the fight. Um, you know, anything I talked about. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.